everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be something a little bit different. We're gonna be taking a look at an automation that I set up this week inside of Mac OS Automator in order to be able to quickly toggle between light and dark mode while I was designing and developing on a project. And this is something as designers and developers that I highly, highly recommend as you're starting off in your career or if you've been in your career for quite some time, it's always good to save time where you can through things like keyboard shortcuts and automations. Let's take a look. All right, so here's the lowdown. As UI designers, UX designers, developers, backend developers, whatever you're doing, if you're doing it on a computer, there's probably somewhere that you can optimize and save yourself some time. I've heard before on podcasts and other uh, just designers in the field that I listen to, if there's something that you've done more than a handful of times and you find yourself repeatedly doing a task, you should reach out and try to find a way to automate that task in order to save yourself some time. It may feel like an extra bit of work to take the time to figure out how to set up an automation or a keyboard shortcut or something like that within your program as as you're building and designing and working. Uh, so often, you know, I'll just take a note for myself after the project's done, then I'll go back and I'll try to create something for myself when I have a little bit of extra time. Otherwise, if you're just in the middle of a project, take a five minute time out and figure out a way to set up something in order to save yourself time on that project. It may not seem like a lot, saving yourself a few seconds here and there, but as you add this time up over many hundreds and hundreds of thousands of repetitions over a career, you end up saving yourself hours, if not days, if not weeks of time. And this is important over a 20, 30 year career, these small little optimizations of saving yourself a few seconds will just go to make you a better designer or developer. Okay, back to the MacRumors.com website. And I picked this one for today because it's a website that has light and dark mode. Not all websites have light and dark mode. If you don't and you're a designer or developer on one of these, please take the time to do it because I am a huge proponent as you know from watching the channel of dark mode. I cannot stand light mode. I don't know what kind of savage likes to look at light mode all the time, but it's like the sun just blaring you in the eyes and it's, it just creates eye fatigue. So I don't know who designs or develops in light mode, but anyway, if you are a designer or developer on this project and you're trying to check both styles between light and dark. So let's say here we change this main title to white in dark mode, of course. And then when we switch to light mode, it's now black. So if you're a designer or developer on this project and you're building for this website, you would need to go change the code. You would need to come in. You would need to go to settings. You need to go to general. You need to go to light and dark mode. And just that small little repetition of opening system preferences going into the settings panel, changing light and dark and toggling here, it's, it's that extra bit of time that just wastes your time as a designer or developer. And again, this stuff may not seem important when you just look at it in the fact that it maybe it saves me a second or two if I automate this. But if I'm gonna be doing this and I work on this website full time, it's important that you set up something to more quickly toggle between both appearances. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to dark mode like a sane person. And we're back here. So we have determined that there is a repeated pattern that we're doing over and over. We're constantly toggling between light and dark mode here as we're designing and developing and QAing against this project. And it just becomes this repeated source of pain that you have to keep going into settings, going into the appearance and setting it each time. So how do we automate this? There's some free tools out there. There's some freeware out there. There's some things in the Mac OS app store that may or may not help you with this. But there's also a free tool that's been here from the beginning inside of Mac OS that is extremely powerful and extremely robust. This is something that you can do all kinds of workflows, applications, quick actions, plugins, all kinds of things that will help speed up your tasks. So for the purpose of today, we're gonna to be taking a look at a quick action. And what it does is present you with the screen over here on the right. And over here on the left, you get a giant list of different actions that you can use. So if we look up change to filter down to change system appearance, we can then drag this in and up here, workflow receives no input. So we don't want anything uh, going into this in order to fire this off. We want it to occur in any application. That's the cool thing about Automator. You can have this just be for Figma shortcuts. You can create your own Figma shortcuts. You can create your own sketch shortcuts, your own Final Cut Pro shortcuts, whatever you want. But for this purpose, we're gonna do it in any application. You can choose an image for what you want it to look like. So maybe we come down to something like this brightness toggle. So it kind of has that light and dark mode feel. And then you can also change the color. 
Now here is the meat and potatoes of what we're doing. So change system appearance, and this is the only action we're gonna run. Now you can chain these things <laughs> all kinds of ways. You can have messages pop up, you can have the settings thing open and close when you fire this off. You can do all kinds of things, but we just really want this to be a simple out of your way shortcut that we're gonna be able to quickly toggle with the keyboard. So now that we have this done, this was pretty easy, right? Didn't require a lot. What we're gonna do is go up to save, and we're gonna save this as toggle light dark. Now you wanna use uh, dashes or something like that to separate this out, and you're gonna see why in a minute, because when we're tying this into a keyboard shortcut, it needs to be uh, something that is easier without spaces or other things that may confuse uh, the computer while you're trying to fire these actions off. So we save this light and dark mode, and now we come over to our services menu up under the application menu that you're in, services you can see there's all kinds of other things in here but then down here now we have a new category called general and this is what houses the automations that we create from inside automator you can see i have two of them here because i've already set up a light and dark mode toggle uh, earlier this week in order to do something very similar but here is the one we just created so if we click toggle light and dark toggles the light and dark mode if we go back up to services toggle light dark it toggles light dark mode back. All right, great. We have our first automation set up from within Automator on Mac OS. Now this is great because we can now go up to the services menu. We can toggle light and dark from anywhere, any application, but it still takes a couple clicks to get there. So we can optimize this even further. Another powerful part of Mac OS automation that you may not be familiar with is keyboard shortcuts. So if we go to system preferences, then we go to the keyboard icon here, open it up, we go to shortcuts, and then you have all of these different automations and shortcut automations that you can set up from within here. For the purpose of this demo, we're gonna to go to app shortcuts. You can see I already have something set up here, spoiler alert. And similar with how it worked in Automator, we can come in here and change it to only work for certain applications. So if you wanna set up some Figma keyboard shortcuts, some Sketch uh, keyboard shortcuts, you can do that from within here. Uh, and now we have to type the menu title and you can actually fire off any menu item just this way. So if you wanna fire off your open command or your save as command, you can wire it to something different. But for this, we're gonna set it up as exactly the same words and exactly, actually I think I had a light dark, exactly the same uppercase, lowercase dashes. It has to be exactly the same. And they even call that out here uh, in the hint. And then we're gonna set this up for just say, let's go shift command D as our shortcut, this is probably gonna override something else somewhere else. So you may wanna set it up uh, for something else. I actually use my function keys at the top of my keyboard. I don't use many of those function keys and I have the full size Apple keyboard. So I have uh, six, seven different function keys that don't even have anything mapped to them. So this is a great place to map these automations. And now if we hit shift command D, you're gonna see that we get this pop up. So you're gonna have to acknowledge this unfortunately on every single new place that you wanna fire off this command. So if you do it from within VS code, you're gonna have to acknowledge it there. If you, if you do it from within mail, you're gonna have to acknowledge it there. But now if we hit it again, we don't get that message again. It's just part of Mac OS security. It's just something that you have to do as part of the new Mac OS. But now we can quickly toggle between both of these. So that is awesome. That allows us to do this from anywhere, any application. And now as we're designing or developing, we don't need to take Take the time to go into settings, go into appearance, toggle that, and deal with that whole repetitive process. So I have one more pro tip for all of you big automation junkies out there, and this is actually something through Stream Deck. So Stream Deck is a small little piece of hardware from Elgato that sits next to your desk, and you plug it in just via standard USB 3, and you can toggle or command all kinds of things through this. You're able to set up your Spotify through here. You're able to fire off commands like in my office, I have my lights on this. I have a nano leaf on my wall. I have that plugged into it. You can really set up anything through this and it allows you to toggle different automations through the interface. So if you have a stream deck, you can fire up your stream deck application that comes with any stream deck and this is on Mac or PC. And you can see here that I already have a bunch of automation set up. So I have my podcast player, Spotify, uh, some keyboard shortcuts for media so I can quickly skip songs and play and pause and things like that. And we're gonna go to a new screen. This is where I'm starting some new automations that I'm working on. You can see here, I was playing around with this same idea, uh, but we can now hook into this automation and wire it up to our stream deck. So we can have a hardware button to push to do this automation as 
well, which is super cool. So we go to system up here and we can go drag the open command over here into one of our little squares and we can set the icon. So if we wanted to set it to something cooler that looks like a light dark mode toggle, we can do that from here. We name it toggle light dark mode. And then here you can basically wire into any application, anything that you want to wire up to this button. So for the purpose of this, we are going to, I'm gonna drag this over from my other screen. It's a problem with having multiple screens. And I've actually already created an application that is in here for light dark mode. So if we scroll down right here, you'll see light dark app, and I'll show you how to create this in a second. But what you can do is essentially wire up that new application that you've created through Automator, and you can now fire this off by just pressing a button on your Stream Deck. So you can not only have a keyboard command for it, you can have something wired up to your Stream Deck and that will allow you to do all kinds of things. And this doesn't just apply necessarily for design development, this could really apply for anything. Streamers out there, uh, Final Cut Pro editors, really anyone who might get use out of some hardware key optimization. So how do we create an application that we can use from within Stream Deck or other purposes? Well, we're gonna do the same thing we did earlier. We're gonna bring up this new window here inside of Automator. And instead of choosing quick action this time, we're gonna pick application. And applications are self-running workflows. Any files or folders dropped onto an application will be used as input to that workflow. So very similar to if you drop an image like on top of Photoshop, it's gonna start Photoshop with that image loaded up. So you can see how you can make these automations really robust and really crazy. There's all kinds of things you could do with, you know, you drag some photos on top of this automation and it will crop them a certain way and then it will apply a certain filter and then export them to a certain filter with a certain name. Like you can get really deep into this stuff. But for the purpose of this demo, just keeping it nice and short and sweet here, we're gonna change this to toggle light dark. Again, you can set up a specific toggle for like light and dark. So if you wanted two buttons on your stream deck, one to turn it on, one to turn it off, you can do that as well. For this purpose, we're just gonna leave it as a toggle. Then we're gonna save. And we're gonna give it a name, toggle light dark. You can choose where to put it. So in this instance, I'm just gonna leave it in my applications folder. You can change the file format here. That's for some more advanced options. We're just gonna save this into our applications folder. And now if we drag the applications folder over here, you're gonna see under toggle light dark, there is now a native app inside of your applications folder. And what this allows you to do is double click it, it will fire off, now you have light mode, boom, done. Click it again, now you have dark mode. And this is what you use inside of Stream Deck in order to add that hardware key that we looked at earlier. Uh, but the extra side benefit too of this is you're able to drag this into your dock. So I've already put it in here, but now you can see I've got this command in here where I can fire it off from my, my dock as well. So you can have it as just this quick application sitting in your dock that you can access at any time. And that's it for today. Hopefully you got some value out of this one. I know this is something a little different for the channel. Uh, if you've seen the banner art on the channel, I'm gonna be changing things up a little bit here and branching out into just the wide world of creativity in general. Still gonna be covering plenty of UI UX, still gonna be covering plenty of your sketch and Figma videos, uh, but also gonna be branching out into some videography, some photography, uh, just the world of creativity in general. Also some things like automation, some of the hardware I use, some of the setup that I use to get my job done, and some things that you you might be interested in outside of just how to use Figma. So uh, if you do enjoy these types of videos, make sure that you like this video. That first of all, lets me know that you enjoy the content, got some value out of it, it's free. So free for you to do, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell if you wanna be notified of any of those future videos coming up on the channel in the future. Thanks for joining me and keep automating. See you on the next video.